Number 11. Write cell schematics for the following cell reactions using platinum as an inert electrode as needed. Okay. So we have our balanced equation here. We have three CuNO3 aqueous plus AuNO3 three aqueous yields three CuNO3 two aqueous plus Au solid. And in this case, we have to draw our lovely cell schematic. Now a schematic, for lack of a better term, is just a different representation of a balanced equation. It's basically like a little scientific drawing, which isn't really much of a drawing at all. In a chemistry world, I guess it is, right? But anyway, let's just first see what the general schematic looks like and then take it from there. So when they ask you for writing cell schematics, it's going to be in this type of form right here, which I will bring over here. Now, basically, this whole thing is being boiled down into two components. One is in blue and one is in red. The blue component is your species that's undergoing oxidation. And just know that the oxidation is always happening to the anode of the cell. So anode oxidation in galvanic cells, tomato, tomato. You can remember this by knowing anox, right? Anox. Anode happens, oxidation happens at the anode. On the flip side, you have your cathode. And at the cathode always happens, you know, reduction always happens at the cathode. You could think of this by saying cat red, but better is red cat. So you have red cat and an ox. But now the thing is, well, who is undergoing oxidation and who's undergoing reduction, right? Remember, oxidation is a loss of electrons and reduction is a gain of electrons. Now, the thing is, is that, okay, we're talking about electrons, but if I look in the upper right corner for all of these, I don't see any charges. How am I gonna know which one is being oxidized or reduced if there's no charges? Well, the first thing is, is that if you see compounds, we gotta break these down because we only wanna know the actual species or the ions inside of a compound that is going to be oxidized or reduced. So now we gotta just use our past knowledge of how to take a compound and break it down into its two ions. Remember, all compounds are always gonna get broken down into its two ions. And the split here is knowing that I see a, a very common polyatomic ion, and I keep seeing it over and over and over again, NO3, NO3, NO3. NO3 is nitrate. That's the one component of this compound, for all of them, it seems. So NO3, NO3, and NO3. So now for the first compound, the, the metal is gonna be the copper. For the second compound, the metal's gonna be the gold, AU. And then we're back to copper. Okay, now let's do charges. Remember, you could always use your subscripts at the bottom to just say how many you have of each. Now remember, NO3, since this is the whole polyatomic, you have one NO3 and one copper. This one crisscrosses up, telling me that the nitrate is a negative one, and this one, crisscrosses up, telling me that the copper was a plus one. So we have a negative one for nitrate and a positive one for copper here. You have one Au, three NO3s. The one crisscrosses up, telling me that the nitrate is a negative one. The three crisscrosses up, telling me that the gold was a plus three. Same thing here. One crisscrosses up, telling me that the nitrate was a negative one. Two crisscrosses up, telling me that the copper was a plus two. And now, aqueous all around, right? Since this was aqueous, both ions are going to be aqueous. This is also aqueous. AQ, 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 AQ. Now, I'm not going to touch, touch this one because this is not a compound. It's just an element. But now we have to see, well, 
who is undergoing oxidation, who's undergoing reduction. We only care about the things that change. Now, I don't know why I put a plus two here. This one should be a plus one, right? Because one and one. Did you catch that? Were you screaming at your, your laptop? I, I heard you guys. That's why I changed it. Anyway, let's continue. So we only want to talk about things that are changing. So for example, if I highlight this copper, right? Copper on the, the reactant side is a plus one charge and the copper on the product side is a plus two. That changed. Literally, one was a plus one, one was a plus two. So I'm going to just rewrite that. So copper plus one yields copper plus two. Okay, let's see now, nitrate, NO3 minus. We got NO3 minus aqueous here. We got NO3 minus aqueous here. Oh boy, there's no change. NO3 minus aqueous here. Was there any change in your nitrates? No. So no change means no loss of electrons, no gain of electrons. So it, this part didn't undergo oxidation or reduction. But now let's just check for the other one. Au3 plus aqueous went to, oh, here's the Au solid. That's a change, right? I see that I have a three plus here and nothing as a charge. So that one I'm going to write down. Au plus three aqueous yields Au solid. Now I have it down to these two things. We're getting closer. Which one now is going to be oxidation? Which one is going to be reduction? Which one is occurring at the, the anode and which one is occurring at the cathode? Remember, Leo the lion says grr. LEO, loss of electrons, is always oxidation. If you're losing electrons, you're losing negatives which means that you're becoming more positive. On the flip side, gain of electrons is reduction. You're gaining negatives, so you're becoming more negative. Let's look at the top one. Cu plus one went to Cu plus two. So we have a plus one going to a plus two. More positive or more negative? Yeah, this is more positive. So the copper is the oxidation one. This is happening at the anode. Now let's just see if the other one makes sense. Au was a plus three and it went to no charge. That means a zero charge. So I have a plus three going to zero. Am I becoming more positive or more negative? I'm decreasing in value. So I'm definitely more negative and that's the reduction. So we're almost there. Now we know that the copper is going on the left side and the uh, gold is going on the right side. This means that that's the reactant and then that's the product. Here was the reactant in our case. Here was the product. They don't have to always be no uh, charge and then a charge. This is just kind of like a general schematic, but you have to go by specifically by what they give you. So blue for copper, we have Cu, uh, that was a plus one. Now I'm gonna break. And now I'm gonna say that copper change into plus two. And what I should do is I should put aqueous. And can I get a little bit more room here? There we go. Now I'm gonna do double break and I'm going on to the reduction side. This was the start, this is the finish. So the first one is AU three plus aqueous, put that break, and then come back for AU solid, and there you go. Now, we only have basically one more thing to do. And maybe can I, I guess I could put it over here. It did say use platinum as an inert electrode as needed. When are we going to use the platinum? Well, just know that platinum 
is PT, and that comes in a solid form. So it seems like I'm adding a solid to either an anode side or a cathode side, which means that if I'm adding a solid, that probably means that whatever side I'm trying to add it on doesn't have a solid. We need a solid in order to use or have electrodes. We can't just have aqueous material trying to interact with each other. So in this case, ah, this is the side that doesn't have a solid. On the flip side, we have AU solid. So this guy, you know, this part, the reduction is already, you know, having an electrode. But since this side does not have a solid, I need to add it. And now the, now the, um, the schematic is going to change a little bit because the platinum is going to go in the front. So it's either going in the front of your uh, anode or it goes in the back of your cathode. So you could always think that it kind of like goes on the sides, whether you're on the blue side or the red side. So in this case, I need to put a bracket and I need to say PT, solid. But now that's gonna basically mess up a couple of things, right? I can't have two brackets on my anode side. I'm only allowed to have one bracket. So when we do have to add platinum, what we're gonna do is we need that bracket, but we're gonna get rid of the other one. The notation always says that you're only allowed to have one bracket per side. So instead, instead of a bracket, I'm just gonna put a comma here. And now that is the final answer. And there you go. What'd you think? I hope this helped. And before I give a final send off, I just want to tie in something here is that you do not care about how many you have in your balance equation. If you notice, I didn't put three CUs and three CUs. Nobody cares. So you only just go down to the bare bones of who the actual uh, ion is and what's it turning into. Now I'm going to say thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Thank you for watching the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I hope you all are having a great day out there. And let's keep studying hard. All right. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.